Dragon's Dogma 2 has been out for just over two weeks now. I have been drilling it and I think it is time that I weigh in on this Dragon's Dogma 2 microtransaction drama. So I played Dragon's Dogma, the first one, recently actually because I'd never played it before but I'd heard so many people say that it was kind of like this great RPG from 2013 I think it came out that just didn't get the recognition it deserved because it came out around the time that Skyrim did and everybody was playing Skyrim at the time and that was true because I didn't even fucking know it existed and I was playing Skyrim back then who wasn't playing Skyrim back then so anyway I picked it up on Steam and I played it was like three pound or something I played through it it was a lot of fun it was aged Okay, you could tell that it was an old game and it took some getting into it. But once I did, it was fine. It was a really enjoyable RPG. And then for that reason, I watched very closely the build up to the launch of Dragon's Dogma 2. And I seen how fucking it was lauded. It was getting a bunch of good reviews. Everybody was saying good things about it. It looked great. There was some great press surrounding it. And then even when the reviews started to drop, it was like people were saying this this is a great game you need to play this game now i almost didn't buy dragon's dogma 2 i have a friend who works over at starburst magazine and he reviewed the game and he played it and told me that the mechanics kind of felt a little bit clunky and there wasn't a lock-on system which is something that annoyed me about the first game and that kind of felt like it was going to be a deal breaker for me i kind of just thought really in a modern game that is hack and slash we're not gonna have that so i almost didn't buy it but then i had some time off work and i wanted a game to play it so i did pick it up in the end and i'm really really fucking glad that i did pick it up i've put 100 hours into it so far i've still not finished it let me just say off the bat this game is fucking fantastic it is an amazing arpg now it is flawed there are things wrong with the game and i will touch on that stuff but the game itself the concept of the game and the way it plays is super refreshing for somebody who enjoys rpgs and it's because it's kind of reminiscent of old rpgs where the game doesn't handhold you as much and it doesn't just tell you where to go and what to do all the time and there's kind of an emphasis on you to go out there and figure out what you need to do if there is a place to be journeyed to you you have to actually make that journey within the game they've done a really really good job of making the journey something that is enjoyable there's no real fast travel mechanic in the game although you do unlock kind of a fast travel mechanic but for the most part you have to use these things called ox carts and they only take you to specific places so you have to go to like the ox cart station that will take you from one town to another town and even then when you're on the ox cart seven times out of ten you will get stopped in the middle of your ox cart journey by a random encounter and you'll have to get off the ox cart and help fend off the enemies and it can be fucking annoying but in a good way sometimes the enemy will fuck up the the ox cart and you've just paid a bunch of money to get on this ox cart to take you somewhere and you're like halfway there it's the dead of night there's all these fucking extra spooky monsters that are out because it's night time and you're stranded where you are and you've got to go find a camp or you've just got a trudge on but the thing is that is supposed to be part of the experience that is a baked in experience for the player and i'm telling you this because part of this whole microtransaction drama which i'll explain in a second kind of plays into that because that kind of sweaty rpg is not for everybody if you are coming on dragon's dogma to have an easy experience like an assassin's creed game or a far cry game or something like that you're not going to get it here that's the whole point of it you have to interact with the world and its inhabitants in order to figure out where you need to go next or what you need to do it's not as clear cut as that i'm just trying to simplify it for those who haven't played it and so anyway the problem was that when this game was sent out for review when video game critics got the game early there wasn't any microtransactions in the game it, they weren't there and then what happened is on launch capcom piled in a bunch of things that you could buy in the online store and people hated that and i get it nobody fucking wants 
wants microtransactions. They are the devil of the video game industry. People do not want to see them in games, me included. I'm not gonna pay fucking 50 quid for a game and then pay you a bunch more money to get things to make my experience better whilst playing. And take note of what I'm saying there, because that is generally speaking how microtransactions work. The game will have a baked in inconvenience that compels players to purchase whatever the microtransaction is to get rid of that inconvenience. And so the idea of this kind of thing being added into Dragon's Dogma 2, it fucked people off and rightly so. But the thing is, that's not what is actually going on here. But but as a result, Dragon's Dogma 2 has been torn a new one. It has been ripped to shreds online. It has been fucking review bombed. I'm looking at the Dragon's Dogma page on Steam here. 55,000 reviews and it's got a mixed user score. Now, I don't need to tell you that for a Steam game, that's bad. Here on Metacritic, you can see that it has a meta score of 86 based on critic reviews, so generally favorable, but the user score is 6.3. People are shitting on this game. And I've seen a lot of comments um, where people are obviously ripping it for the microtransaction situation and talking about the specific microtransactions that they decided to add post-launch, which enable the player to do certain things or gain certain things within the world. But the way that a lot of these people are talking about it, they haven't fucking played the game, man. And again, I'm not defending the introduction of microtransactions. We don't want them there and they don't need to be there. It's this whole thing that I talked about before, when there was the leak from the last of us part two and everybody found out about that thing if you don't know what i'm talking about the story of the last of us 2 was leaked online before the game came out and there was a plot point pretty early on in the game i'm not going to say it in the video that people did not like and were not happy about and so therefore people shat on the game when it was released without having played the game and that's a problem that is something that is a fucking problem because jumping onto these review sites you don't need to prove that you've played the game you don't need to have any hours locked into the game to write a review on it you can just put your piece on the internet and it affects the overall score of the game now i just want to add that 100 hours of playing the game i didn't even know where the microtransactions were they're not like baked into the game they're not in the pause menu and you pause the game or anything like that there's a section at the start of the game in the start menu that says online store and if you click on that it brings you to this steam page here so they're not being like rammed down your throat or anything like that which is kind of how some of the comments i've read have portrayed the situation but no it's just a it's just these on the steam page now don't get me wrong it's dumb and i don't know why they did it so here you can buy rift crystals um i don't know why anyone would buy these i don't know why anybody playing this game would buy rift crystals you pick these up often you do not need these really at all basically what you do is you spend these on buying your pawn your pawns are these characters that basically fill your party and come around and fight with you. Now, 100 hours of playing in it, I, I have I have kept the same pawns most of the way through. I swap them out every now and then. I always have had ample rift crystals to be able to do that. So I, I don't know why anyone would buy these. I don't know why they would buy these. These are a little bit uh, less tasteful. These are wake stones. And basically what happens is when you die in the game, you can revive yourself if you have a wake stone. But again, these things can be found in the world quite often as well. I think at the moment I have four wake stones but the game auto saves so often that over nine times out of ten i will just reload from the last save because it will pretty much be at the start of the fight that i was just having anyway i keep thinking to myself that maybe in the late game these are going to come a lot more in handy but right now i could take them or leave them you could buy them if you want to buy them you could not buy them if you don't want to buy them but the point i'm making is that you do not need to buy these now this one is the one that a lot of people were kicking up a fuss about this is the port crystal and basically you put this crystal down somewhere and then you're able to fast travel to that location wherever you put it down so this is where it's obvious to me that a lot of the people that are complaining about these microtransactions have not played the game because you do get these in game i have two at the moment and again i haven't used them because the traversal system is fine it's good it's actually a point of the game you're supposed to make those journeys okay and if you don't want to make them because you can't be fucked then you can use the port crystals but what has been rife on the internet is that oh you can't fast travel in the game you you cannot fast travel in the game and the only way to fast travel is to buy this microtransaction it is 
just not true. You can collect these in the game and use them in the game. Yes, they're few and far between, but that is the point. That is the point of the game. So essentially, the things that they're adding here that people are complaining about are kind of like accessibility things, things that make the game a little bit easier for people who want it that way. But it doesn't It doesn't make the game better. It makes the game worse. This one drove me crazy. This is the Art of Metamorphosis Character Editor. There are people out there saying that you cannot edit your character at all in the game. Whoever's saying that is a fucking dickhead. You can literally do this in like, the first major town that you go to we're talking about like two hours of gameplay max you basically gotta get out of the tutorial and just do a little bit of the game and then you end up in this first city and you can do it there again stupid of capcom for even putting it in because why the fuck anyone would need it is just ridiculous because at the point where anyone's gonna want to change the character they're probably gonna have played enough of the game to be able to just go do it in game so of course i've seen a bunch of youtubers chiming up about this again i think most of the people that were making those videos hadn't actually played the game or hadn't played much of it yet one of the things that kept popping up was that in order to make microtransactions viable there has to be like a built-in inconvenience for the player it sort of drives traffic towards these microtransactions because the player gets annoyed by the inconvenience and so then they purchase the thing that they can purchase to get rid of that inconvenience and that is true of a lot of video games it is not true of dragon's dogma because the base intention of the this game is to play it how it's built these are just like convenience things to make the game a little bit easier now should they exist absolutely fucking not why the fuck capcom did you not just put in an easier mode a more accessible mode because there will be people out there that will be put off by the style of the game i see a lot of the bad reviews talking about how slow the game is and how grindy the game is but that is the point and the developers have done such a good job of making that grind one that is constant consistently engaging and fun there isn't a point in the game or there hasn't been for me so far where i have felt too underpowered or where the game's balancing fell off or the pacing has fell off it hasn't happened to me at all now if that was the case that's where the microtransactions become a real problem for me i think one of the really obvious examples of this is assassin's creed odyssey in assassin's creed odyssey the game is clearly clearly unbalanced you kind of start this game off off on a path where you're getting stronger and you're getting better and it feels like a lot of fun and then you kind of get to the midpoint of the game and the balancing just kind of seems to plateau it's a lot harder to gain xp and you don't really seem to be getting any stronger so what happens is in like the second third of assassin's creed odyssey if you want to get to the end of the game then you really really have to sweat it out you have to do a bunch of side content and the game really does become this boring boring grind now what ubisoft did is i think it was like three pound fifty you could buy an xp booster and what that would do is it would rebalance the game for you so if you spent money on the xp booster the game would kind of continue that upward trajectory so that you weren't putting in an excessive amount of time in order to feel like you were where you needed to be to take on the end game content now that right there is a microtransaction where the developers have created an inconvenience for the players. They have purposely unbalanced the game to drive you to want to get that XP boost. That is a terrible microtransaction and that is one that deserves calling out for what it is. But again, going back to these ones in Dragon's Dogma 2, they do not matter. You do not need any of this shit. All of this stuff here, you can find and get within the game. And worse yet, all of this stuff here make the game a worse experience and i don't want to keep backtracking and say that i'm excusing them because i'm not because it is a shitty move because like i said there are people out there that would have liked more accessibility options and they should have been included damn fucking right protest with your wallet just don't fucking buy them and you'll have a better experience for not buying them and it's annoying because there are problems with dragon's dogma 2 especially on pc which is where i'm playing it the game runs like a fucking potato it took me a fucking obscene 
amount of time to find settings that run the game stable. And I've not got an amazing PC, I'm running a 1080, but I am above the minimum required. And by all accounts, people are still having problems with like fucking 4080s, 4090s. So the game is just poorly optimized. And that is a real problem. That is something that we should be pulling Capcom up about. So closing points. Yes, the microtransactions are shitty. They didn't need to be there. And it is bullshit that they didn't just make the accessibility option for players who invested in the game in the first place. But if you want the real Dragon's Dogma 2 experience, then you won't touch them. But all the hate and shade that's been thrown at the game because of the microtransactions, just don't fucking buy them. And I promise you, you'll have a better time because of it. All right, that's me. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you're new here, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Shh. <gasps>